So as you might know, there's quite a bit of stuff going on here in the world today in terms of stock market, specifically with Robinhood. And so I kind of had the question of what would it take to build a stock market trading app? So I went to this website here and it said here at the bottom, after all this information, that is very good information. I highly encourage all of you to actually read this. Uh, but it says all in all, this development project should take around 2,744 hours to 5,056 hours divided among like seven different people. And I was like, ain't nobody got time for that. And this document has a ton of uh, awesome information in terms of like, if you're actually wanting to build a proper trading platform application, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of effort, but there are ways that we can kickstart this process and make it a little bit faster. For instance, for the backend development, we can go ahead and use an API. For the front end development, we can only focus on one platform such as iOS, that is what I focus on. And with that, the time should be crunched a little bit further and further down and so I just decided to take one day just to see how much I could get done and see how far I could get so first things first I wanted to go ahead and look for a platform that would allow me to trade stocks there's actually a few different uh, websites that actually have an API to do this uh, for instance actually Robinhood has an API that you can use in some form it's a little bit uh, weird but IEX exchange is another one but the big the best one that I came across was called Alpaca and it's a pretty simple and easy way to get it going. And it's actually kind of like Robinhood in that it's a zero dollar commission free API kind of a thing. And so that means there's not gonna be any fees when trading. But this was one of the most robust APIs that allowed me to actually buy stocks, sell stocks, see the stock price and a bunch of other stuff like that. And so this was a great place to start. Now, if you have no idea on how to use an API, um, you can go ahead and check out my video here on how to use an API a bit more. But generally to get started with an API, you would need to first create an account with the company, then you would get your API key. And generally they have two different things. They have like test keys and live keys. So once you do get your API key, you wanna start using it. And so the best way to use it is they have some how to code examples. And the best example that I found uh, is this one right here. And basically, yeah, you want to read the post on their forum and you want to go ahead and get started. So first thing they recommend is using Postman to test things out. Now they recommend using Postman here and this is because it's a little bit easier to test things. And once you actually have it tested and working, then it's easier to integrate into your own backend. And so once you head over to Postman, you create an account and all that, you're going to go over to your workspaces. You're going to create a new workspace. I already have a workspace here and then you're gonna click this plus button. And once you have this plus button here, it's just gonna create a collection. And then you're going to add a request to get started. Then once you're in that, you should be able to add your own request and get started with that. And so you can see right here, this is going to be a get. So this is meaning we're like grabbing information from Alpaca. And so if you follow their form a little bit more, you should be able to see that they're, the first thing that they tell you to do is they want you to get information about the account. Now the account they're talking about right here is just this test account that comes along with your API key. And so that's the first thing we're going to want to do is you add the URL and then you add your API keys. So you can see here, I do that. I have this where we grab the account and then going to the headers here, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and add the API keys. And the place to get your API keys is by going here to Alpaca, Paper Trading, and then you should see here on the right that you have your API keys and you would just view them, uh, regenerate a secret key if you wanna see that and so forth. And so there's, that's where you would see your API keys. So this is the client key and then this is the secret key here. And so you wanna add those right in there along with our request. And that way, when we actually request something, it'll go ahead and return information down here. And this is good to see like the information that we should be trying to display on our front end, or in our case, on our application. Now, once you have like this created, you wanna go ahead and do this for all of the different requests that you want to do. So for instance, we have get account, get assets here. Um, you, again, you wanna add the headers. With post here, it gets a little bit more complicated because we're actually putting information into Alpaca in this case, and because we're buying stock. And so this is where we go to the headers. Again, you have the headers, but you also have a body. And so this body is very simple. It kind of says, what stock are you buying? What's the symbol of the stock? How much are you buying? Um, are you buying? Are you selling? The type, the time and force, what, what time are we going to do it? Is it going to be immediate or only in the day? You know, the different things are along with stocks that I don't understand too much. But this is like the most basic that you would need in order to get started. Symbol, quantity, side, type, time and force. And when you send that, it's going to go ahead and send a request. 
and it's gonna say that you went ahead and placed an order for Google for the quantity of one and so forth. And then remember, this is only up in order, so your order hasn't been fulfilled yet, in the which when it does get fulfilled, it would be called a position. And so this is where we get positions, essentially. So we go ahead and grab the positions. Currently, I have nothing in my account. I don't own any stock in my account, but I have orders for stocks. And in order to see that all this is happening, you can go over to Alpaca here, go to the paper accounts, and you should be able to see that our equity is at 100,000 and our buying power is going down a little bit more. This is all fake money. I'm not, I'm not rich. <laughs> unfortunately but you should be able to see that we just placed an order for google this was literally just now but you should be able to see here this is our order history and then it says it's all accepted but it's just waiting because we are currently the weekend so it can't place an order for anything at the moment um, and so therefore we don't have anything inside of our portfolio at the moment then once you do have a position you can go ahead and sell that position so for instance if we want to sell all our google stocks we can do that right here. We just say paper API slash position slash Google. And then this is going to be a delete. So rather than post, it's going to be delete. And once we actually send this, it's gonna give us an error at the moment because we don't have anything from Google to delete. Uh, but it would generally just have the key and the secret key. And so this is all the stuff that's like clearly laid out inside of this forum post here. So if you don't wanna, do you wanna like dive into it a little bit more? Check this post out, it's very helpful. Then I have another one here that gets stock info. And so this is from another part of the API that Alpaca does in which they give real time stock market data. And so you can go ahead and check out the docs there, market data, Alpaca data API, and you should be able to see like all of the things that are necessary in order to get that started. But basically all we do is we go ahead and call that data.alpaca.markets and then for Google or for whatever symbol that we want. And then we add, of course, our API keys accordingly. And from there, you should be able to see the latest stock price from Google. Now, one of the things about Postman is it's great for testing, but you can't actually like use it inside of your application as far as I'm aware. And so now we need to go ahead and take this that we have that you can see that it's actually working and actually convert it to code that we can use. And so what I did is I created another backend on Heroku that will host Node.js code. And so what Postman does is it actually takes these values that we just put in here. And if you go to the code, code snippet here, it can create an easy way to just take what we created here and transfer it over to code. Now it does support tons of different code here, including Swift. Uh, I don't recommend using Swift because you don't want your secret keys on the front end but it does do that if you wanted to. I'm personally more used to Node.js, so I used Node.js uh, Unirest here, and I created a function accordingly for each and every one of these get account, get assets, and so on. And so now, instead of my backend, you can easily see that we have app.get, and then anytime I say like slash get account or slash get orders or get assets or anything like that, and so now I can go ahead and go to, let's say, uh, the get account function. If I wanted to use that, all I would have to do is refer to this URL here, argustonks.herokuapp.com slash get account. And when I call this, it's actually going to go ahead and return the exact same information that we were getting from Postman. And I did that for each and every one of these different uh, functions here. And so that's kind of just an easy way to get started with uh, developing your own backend, essentially. Most of the code was done right here, so I didn't need to do a whole lot. The only thing that I really needed to do was install Unirest, and all you need to really do for that is go to Terminal, and from within Terminal, you just uh, go to your project. And once you're navigated to the place in which this index.js file is held, uh, you want to go ahead and first off inside of your index.js you say const unirest will be equal to require unirest and then inside of here you just say npm install unirest and that'll go ahead and install that package inside of your backend and that'll just make things easier so that this code actually works now the biggest thing to note uh, with the code that i kind of changed is we have app.get slash account get account then we create a function here in the which it has a request and a response. And with this request, that means like the information going into uh, our backend. And then the response is the information going out of our backend when the function is finished completing here. This is what we wanna call when we're actually sending information back to our application. And so when everything is said and done, uh, just like we say console.log res.rawbody, I basically just copied this res.rawbody and I said resp.send 
our res.rob body. And so that'll send this information back to our application. And this is in a JSON format. And so it's easy to break apart inside of our application. All right, so now that we have kind of the backend developed, developed. <laughs> um, I kind of breezed over it, but you kind of get the idea, right? And so finally, with all of that said, I went ahead and created kind of the front end. And so the front end here, oh yeah, I should make this bigger. <laughs> Sorry, you guys are not ants, you can't read that. And then at long last, we get to our front end, which is probably the easier part of it all. First things first, design, we just have a place to display our portfolio value, our buying power, and then a text field to search uh, all the stocks. Then at the bottom here, if, uh, if we are searching, we're gonna go ahead and uh, show the stocks that we are searching for. And if we aren't searching, then we're gonna show all of the orders that we have placed in the past. Um, when the view loads, we want to go ahead and grab our account and all the information inside of our account, including our buying power and all that. And then for get assets here, this is important because this is getting all of the different stocks that we could buy and just putting it inside of a giant array inside of our application. Uh, this may or may not be the best way to do things, but it does make it way better in terms of searching. So you can just easily search uh, a stock and use it. And then of course, get orders, we'll get all the orders and then that gets displayed down there. Now, all of this is being called from where? So this is our assets controller. If we go to our assets controller here, uh, it's essentially just a front end way of calling our back end. And so I have a different function for each of these functions here. And so you can easily see, we create a request in the which we're going to our arkastonks.herokuapp.com and then we're just adding get assets at the back here, in which we go ahead and call a data task. That data task gets passed back. We decode that uh, JSON and into something that's actually readable. So for instance, our asset here, if we go down to the bottom, you should be able to see all of the different uh, values that can be done inside of our asset. So we are just grabbing the ID, the name, and the symbol, basically. But there are more things that you could get from an asset. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit different is in terms of the cell asset, we include a couple parameters. Uh, the only parameter really is symbol, which stock are we selling? And then I also have it upon completion that'll send basically a little notification to the user that something was sold or bought. And the same goes for buying an asset. Again, we are posting in this case, in which again, we are carrying along our symbol and the parameters and the which we should be able to break that apart up here inside of our uh, by asset, we're going rec.body.symbol, and then that is being, and then we apply that symbol to when we are actually buying things. And last but not least, get stock price. So this one's a little bit more interesting because we have to post, but it's actually a get function. Uh, so it's post here, then on the back end, it's actually only get, um, but it, it, it works. <laughs> so. I don't question it. And that's about it in terms of our application. So now let's go ahead and check out how this thing works. So let's build and run this. So as you can see here, we could be able to see our orders. Uh, we just recently ordered Google, so there's that. And then you can scroll down. It's all choppy because this is in the simulator. I'm screen recording and all that stuff, but it does re run really smooth on the iPhone. Um, then if we want to search for something, we can say Apple or let's say GameStop. You can see that that's there as well. Uh, it seems to be a big stock these days, so I'll go ahead and buy one of those. It'll buy it, and we should be able to see within our Alpaca database uh, that I just bought some GameStop stock, and that all worked. Now again, if I hit the sell button, it's gonna say sold, but there's actually an issue going on in the background because our, at the moment there is nothing, we can't sell anything, it's a weekend, so therefore it doesn't go through properly. And so, like I said, this is kind of a bare bones start to this whole application. Uh, but it does work to a certain extent. Again, it's grabbing like the current price. It's $313.04. And so this is a good way to actually get started. Now, let's talk about going forward this, with this application because obviously you can't post this on the App Store. So let's talk about what we can do further. So first off, this is only being applied to one account. So if you do want to add other users and other accounts and other bank accounts and stuff like that, you would need to go ahead and uh, implement OAuth into your application. And this would just allow users to basically sign in, sign up, create their own account through Alpaca, uh, and that way they can monitor their money and all that stuff and stocks and all that stuff in their own account. The other thing that would need to be done is in terms of our application, right? You would want to show graphs. You would want to show 
the past data of a stock. So one of the things that Alpaca actually recommends using is Polygon.io. There's probably other ways of doing it, but Polygon seems to be like a pretty well-known and pretty widely used uh, way of monitoring stocks and seeing how they are doing. And so this would allow for more data inside of your application and so on. Other than that, that is kind of the application, right? We have the money, we buy things, we buy the stocks, we buy and sell them, you know, stock stuff. <laughs> anyway, this was kind of just like a proof of concept. I wanted to see if I could do something like this because I thought it was kind of a cool idea with all this nonsense about Robin Hood and stuff going down. So. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about this video because I know I didn't like program alongside you, but I thought it was a cool way to give an overview on something a little bit more complicated where you wouldn't have to program with me for nine hours straight and we could just get it all done with in one sitting. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!